Chapter 24 I leaned on the cane and tried to pull myself up from the couch, but my feeble arms gave way and I fell back into the cushion. You've got to help me get home, I told Kawhi Beth. I thought of a symbol of love. It's at my house. Okay, let's go, she replied. But what about the kids coming over here? Sabrina asked, swallowing a chunk of Milky Way. What about the party? You stay here and greet them, Carl Beth told her. If Steve really can't find symbol of love at his house, and if it works, we'll be right back. It'll work, I said. I know it will. But I had my fingers crossed, which made it even harder to climb up from the couch. Carl Beth saw me struggling. She took both my hands and pulled me to my feet. Yuck! What are those things moving around in your ears? She cried, making a disgusted face. Spiders, I said quietly. She swallowed hard. I showed Professor something that works. Me too, I murmured as she guided me to the door. Carbet turned back into the living room. Don't eat all the chocolate while we're gone, she called Sabrina. It was only my second piece, Sabrina protested with her mouth full. We stepped into the darkness. Some kids in costumes were coming up the driveway, all carrying bulging trick or treat bags. Hey, Cara Beth, where are you going? A girl called. I'm doing a good deed, Cara Beth replied. See you guys later. She turned back to me. I can't believe you didn't listen to me, Steve. You really look disgusting. I can't even wipe the green cobs out of my nose, I wailed. Holding me by the shoulder, she guided me toward my house. We crossed the street on my block. I heard kids laughing and loud music inside the house on the corner, a Halloween party. As we passed the house, I stumbled over a moving shadow. Carl Beth caught me before I fell. What was that? I cried. Then I saw a scamper silently across the street. A black cat. I laughed. What else could I do? I had to laugh. Go ahead, cat. I thought bitterly. Go ahead and cross my path. I couldn't have any worse luck. Could I? My house came into view past a row of tall evergreen shrubs. Through the shrubs, I could see that nearly all downstairs lights were on. Are your parents home? Carl Beth asked, helped me across the grass. I nodded. Yeah, they're home. Do they know about the... Uh, no, I replied. They think it's a costume. As we stepped onto the front stoop, I could hear Sparky start to bark inside the house. I pushed open the door, and the little dog let out an excited yip and leaped up at me. His paws landed on my waist and pushed me back hard. I toppled against the wall. Down, Sparky! Please, get down! I pleaded in my old man's croak. I knew Sparky was glad to see me, but I was too feeble for his usual greeting. Down, boy! Please! Carbet finally managed to pull a dog off me so that I could stand up, and she held on to Sparky until I regained my balance. Steve? Is that you? I heard Mom call from the den. You're back so early! Mom took her into the living room. She had changed into the gray flannel sweatshirt she usually blacks at night, and she had her blonde hair and curlers. Oh, hi, Kari Beth, she cried in surprise. I wasn't expecting visitors. I... That's okay, Mom, I croaked. We're only staying a minute. We came back to get something. Don't you love Steve's costume? My mom asked Kari Beth. Isn't that the most horrible mask you ever saw? You mean he's wearing a mask? Kari Beth joked. She and Mom enjoyed a good laugh. Sparky stiffed my shoes. What'd you come back for? My Max me. Those black and white cookies, I replied eagerly. You know, the ones you bought me yesterday? Those cookies were a symbol of love. Mom had told me she drove two miles out of her way to buy them for me. She knew they were my favorite cookies in the whole world, and she drove out of her way to buy them because she loves me. So the cookies were the perfect symbol of love. I couldn't wait to buy into one. One bite, I knew, and I'd be able to pull off this horrible mask. Mom's face twisted in surprise. She narrowed her eyes, studied me. You came back for those cookies? Why? What about all your trick-or-treat candy? Uh, well, I stammered. My brain stalled. I couldn't think of a good reason. He had a strong craving, Carl Bev chimed in. He told me he's been thinking about the cookies all night. That's right. I had a craving, I repeated. Candy bars can't compare, Mom. Those cookies are the best. I love them too, Carl Bev added. So I came back with Steve. We want to bring him to my Halloween party. Mom tsk tsk. What a shame, she said. Huh? I cried, feeling my heart skip a beat. 
What do you mean? What's wrong? Mom shook her head. The cookies are gone, she replied softly. The dog found the box this morning and got into it. I'm sorry, guys, but Sparky ate them all. And just for the record, those cookies were chocolate, too. So pretty much the dog's going to die pretty soon, unfortunately. Chat 25, next time, guys. Take care and be safe.